Hello and welcome to Sites TV. Bit of a packed show, this one. Um, didn't do any Friday Night Lives because we're in Blackpool. Uh, Rhyme a beard of tyke has always made a pleasure. I know you were there because I bumped into you as well, you know. So, yeah, uh, so it's going to get on about Blackpool. It's going to get on about the Charlton game. It's going to get on about the fans forum and kind of cover the flag situation at West End. We've got quite a bit to get through, but we'll try and uh, cover all bases. So, Ryan Bearded Tyke, um, again, it was a game that, well, it's always a tricky game, Blackpool, when we go to it, mate. Yeah. Um, I would, I'd stayed over, I know you did as well, stayed over Friday night. Uh, woke up Saturday, had a stroll down to Blackpool, uh, went to Manchester Sports Bar on Corner, and literally just started a pint <coughs> of one of many. Um, <laughs> and Radio Sheffield phone is up, wanted to know my thoughts about games, so I tell them about that. When Start, Start 11 came out, there were a few eyebrows on my behalf, seeing that Cotter yeah. and Craig weren't in. I'm thinking, wow, Russell and O'Keefe, big call. But what, were you surprised and Start 11? I was surprised that Cotter had been <laughs> dropped, um, but I weren't surprised that Craig had been dropped, Matthew Craig had been dropped, because it, it were either Craig and Connell weren't playing very well or they weren't playing well together, but he, he, didn't, mm. he didn't look to be playing well the last few games. Mm. And it's whether them two were getting in each other's way. Um, but me, for me personally, I'm not surprised he dropped Craig because, listen, let's face it, Luke Connell's best at number six, isn't he? He's the best CDM. He, that is his best position. I know he's done well in that sort of advanced position where where Herbie Kane used to play. So if you, you know, you're all traditional number eight, that kind yeah. of position. Yeah. But this is not his best position under Michael Duffy. We're better in that centre defensive midfield, picking the ball up from defence, coming out of defence and turning it round and quickly turning it round. Um, so I'm glad to see Luca back in that role. To be fair, um, but I was surprised. <laughs> I was surprised that when I saw John Russell, I thought, well, he must be playing CDM then, and then he mm. was in that more advanced role. But give him his due, mate. He had a great game. Mm. You know, a few loose passes. Um, I'd say from 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 Russell, um, which, which is part of his game. But I actually thought he played really well. I thought that when I thought, especially when we were passing through the midfield and we stopped lumping it up because we did a bit. The performance was great. Go in, but, yeah. come on that, but I thought that once we played it through midfield and got it into his feet, he can spray ball of Ark and John when he's playing well. Mm -hmm. He's got it, you know. He really does. He, he he sprays ball about really well, and you know, and it was a great pass for um, for the goal into into. Um, into day key day, so yeah, yeah, a few raised eyebrows, mate. But for you know, to be fair, it panned out, didn't it? Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I mean, credit we credit's due and all because we've we've all you know, we've called it out on this channel several times that you know, Craig and O'Connell, they seem to be gaining one another's way and they're not playing. So, again, it one of them what who's going to make way, it's going to be Craig over Connell, you know, Luca obviously be being captain. Um. We are Keith and Cotter. It's one of them. Me. It's like Cotter can have a few games, decent games, and then start to lose it a bit. And then same can happen to Keith. It, it's like that consistently. This is my number two spot. So you know, go elsewhere kind of thing. And I track. I, I kind of get that as an headache. It'd be nice to have an headache on that left wing back position. But to be fair, I thought you know, Jen, he he played decent. He had, he had a decent oh, really well, down man. back flank. Yeah. Um, I thought Russell were a bit, at the beginning, I thought it were a bit leggy. I'm thinking, hmm, probably about five, ten minutes. But then all of a sudden, it were closing down. It were yeah. trying to look for that ball. I'm thinking, maybe it's a confidence thing. Maybe he needs a couple of runs in, in first team to get to no players and no other positions and that. Yeah. But I agree with you. I, I will I will look at him in particular. And especially in the second half, I'm thinking, Lads like starting to and puff a bit like now because he, he, he was closing down, he was making that run. One player who I was surprised with a lot was Phillips. I thought he was just off it altogether, mate. I thought it was off the boil. He's still a bit injured, mate, if I'm being yeah. honest. I think, I think obviously, he's, he's, it would appear that he's been playing with an injury most of the season with a toe injury and he's had lots of um, injections, you know. So he went down the second cool. half and I thought, oh, God, I wonder if this is a thing. It For me, he just looked off the pace. It would be great to see him back at number eight, but yeah, I mean, listen, Adam, I, I love Adam Phillips. I think he's a great player. Yeah, when, he, when yeah. he when he's on song, mate, he's absolutely he's amazing. Um, 
And what would you, know, you say fit wise to... is? Would you say it's about seventy eight percent fit? Do you think? Yeah, I think it's just fitness, mate. Because you know, mm. if you've got, if you've got a damaged toe and you're trying to play football, it's every single time you kick ball or take a step, it's gonna he's gonna be in pain, isn't yeah, it? If, it's, yeah. if they were trying to mask that injury with you know, it's always a short term thing. But when you're into a football season, you're playing a lot of Saturday Tuesdays. It's when does it get time to repair? Mm. You know what I mean, when does it? When do we give him a time? To, to, to get better. And I suppose he's had that time now. Um, you know, he's had those few, he missed those few, few games. We've had the two week off. Mm. Um, so he's come back in, but then again, it might just be match, match sharpness, mate. It might just be match sharpness. But yeah, um, yeah, well, I, don't, I don't, I mean, I think, I think Adam Phillips is, he's, he's one of his better players, mate. When, he, when he's playing oh. well, he's outstanding. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, I, I just hope he gets back to the play that we know he can because he can he can hit a mean ball and all from outside of the box and I think he might be fitness thing, mate, than all, than yeah. all else. Just because he's had that he's been carrying that injury and then obviously might be coming back to Matt's fitness. Yeah. Uh on about performance in a minute, but just before we get to the game it's then uh well like so, so Shad knows we you know, the Bruce family, what yeah, happened absolutely. with you know, four month old uh Ben again. It brought Friday night, and uh, mm -hmm. when we're walking to the ground, and in some of the pubs and about, you know, obviously, Bounce fans were talking about it. And when it started, but the, the one thing that I liked about this football community, the footballing world, is that all sets of fans, all sides at the ground, were applauding. Yeah. But also the referee, quality, quality. Yeah. Refreshing that, mate. I right, stopped the game because I know Gabby were going to putting ball down and I'm looking at ref and I'm thinking he's going so just stop just yeah. and, I've, it, and 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 from that for me in a point in a moment like that I know referees get a bed rap uh, a bed rap sometimes and that yeah. like for for the stuff but I just want to put it out there fair fair play to referee for understand yeah. the situation stopping game minutes applause observed by all impeccably by the way and yeah. game carried on so full respect to uh, ref for that mate um, yeah, so getting back to the game, performance wise, I think it was a vast pro uh, performance of, of the last couple of games, mate. What I saw on the things yeah, I've been working on, ma massively different, mate. You know, uh, were it perfect? No, it's not. I don't, I don't think you know, you know, we're just talking about a fair, it is League One football after all. Um, you're probably not going to see the perfect display, but it were, you know, what we wanted from, um. I think what most fans wanted most more than anything was a significant part performance improvement. Yeah. Usually, you know, they'll say the result's not as important, but usually the result comes with a performance anyway. So you go, they sort of, the two go hand in hand. So it were, um, yeah, really good to see, mate, because it look it feels like hopefully it's listen, it's one game, so let's not get carried, let's not get mm -hmm. carried away. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I want it to improve. But it certainly seems to be some little green shoots poking through of of how he wants us to play. How we're going to be playing because that was just different on Saturday. You know, there was still some, still some long ball in there, still a few straight passes. Um, but I thought overall, I thought you know you could see what we were trying to do. We were yeah. attacking. We were trying to get that, trying to get that ball <laughs> forward. We, we we created a lot more chances. We actually played some really nice football at times. Put some really nice moves together. Just go and, build up, mate. That one prime yeah. example of one, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and what we're really good to hear because if you listen, to, have you seen the DKD interview before? Um, yeah, yeah. Before the game, they've been working on patterns and attacking patterns, mm. and you could see that on the yeah, pitch. you could, mate. Yeah, you saw that on the pitch, which is really good because it's almost like what what um, Daryl and his and his coaching team are trying to get across is now it's now happening. Yeah, it's now happening. Um, hopefully, hopefully, you know, obviously we've got we've got. We've got Charlton, we've got a tricky team, you know, Charlton are in around where we are in the league. Mm -hmm. from a, I know they're about, I think, the four places behind us in the league, but it's only one oh, point. Wise, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's no, it's something no. So it's going to be, Nathan Jones is a great manager, so it's going to be interesting to see if we can carry that performance on, mate. Um, yeah. But, you know, long may it continue, Neil, because it, it, were, it were vastly improved and it were, at no point were I sat there thinking, oh, this is diabolical, you know, because we've had that for the last few games. Oh, of course, so, been, yeah. After about fifteen minutes, you're just rolling your eyes and giving it. Oh, what am I watching here? What is this? I, mean, I didn't feel like at all. I don't think I can't really point anybody out on the pitch that had a bad game. That I thought, no, they were poor today. They were poor today. I didn't I think, think that about anybody. I think pleasing aspect for me, like what you would have said via that two week break. Maybe it came at right time. 
I think, for a reset, Absolutely. a rethink, yeah. worked on. And I, I did see that DKD um, interview and he's on about passing and patterns. And I'm thinking, I, I hope you have been. I hope it's not just like uh, saying it just for, well, we've been doing this. Yeah. But it was pleasing to see, especially for, for score, but for the game as well, they were trying to do that link up and that flake and that DKD run onto it. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what yeah. we know. The, yeah. calib- the players can do that. Yeah. And it's like, just keep it going. I mean, no disrespect. I thought we were, I thought we deserved to to win the game with, with chances. Yeah. I know Blackpool equalised. We'll get on to Blackpool equalised after DKD, what we just said. Uh, and a few fans were behind me and fair play to Barnes following the Mediterranean atmosphere. Yeah. Um, their goal, it, I don't, I haven't watched it back, watched it back because I've been recovering from that pool. Yeah. But at time, in real time, it looked like it, it came across and it was like a bit of a shin or something. It just like sent to go in. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, me. from what I can see from it, it's a good ball in and he's put yeah, it right yeah. into the mixer. He's put it right into the mixer. It's, it's a difficult one because at first I thought, it didn't want to clean this, it for me. I did this put online. I thought maybe Slanina could have come for it, but it's in that awkward area where. You know, does he come and miss it and his goal's open? Or does he leave yeah. it in that sort of that no man zone if you're like in no man's land? Yeah. He yeah. probably could have come for it. Um, but it does drop around just it's sort of dropping around just in front of six yard backs, maybe eight, eight nine yard out. Yeah. Um, it like low to dropping them. So it could have been oh, yeah. dropped on him. So it's a bit awkward, but mm. I think Mark Roberts jumps for it. He either mistimes his jump or he just thought it's just too high for him and it drops behind him, it, it ricochets off. Blackpool lays knee and it, it, it trickles in. But what mm-hmm. Samina's done is he saw he sort of seen move to go football as if he's gonna get rare and then and then he comes back and then he's slightly out of position. Mm-hmm. He, just can't, he just can't get across then. Yeah. So it almost trickles in and he's just not got from a from a standing start, he's just not got enough time and pace to get across to it. So it it were an awful goal to concede. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, pl- weren't, it weren't like Difficult to say that they'd not created it with a good move. They put a good ball into area, you know. Which it makes it in danger area, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. See what happens. Yeah. And it's taken a bit of a scuffle and, and, and gone in. But, you know, I think Look, we've got our first it, round of it for the winner. So it, it evened it sent out, really. Yeah. I mean, if if it had, if it had equalised like that, I'd have been saying, yeah, we played for that like it was. It was danger ball. What did it like? But you're going to take it, yeah. it yeah. aren't you? If you go in, they go in, don't they? <laughs> of course, I don't, mate. Uh, but pleasing for me, is that we didn't sit back. I didn't see any heads go down. If all we, we, it fires up even more. Yeah. So and you know, some of the tuitions came on. Um, I thought, to be fair, and there were a few people around me saying, "What's the point of bringing Jalla on like now?" Because you're like pretty late on. I'm thinking, yeah, is he going to have an yeah. impact? Gets a corner. Well, I mean, I'm like thinking, can we put it mixing? Can we get something from it? And lo and behold, up pops. I thought. When Pines came on, I'm thinking, ah, he's, going, he's going to get his nut on this and put it back at net. I think everybody was expecting that. Roberts comes up. And I, even now, I can see it now. It looks like slow motion. It's like going over. I'm thinking, just drop. Just drop. And I start back at net. You bulge. I'm like, yes, I was just waiting for him to go to run in at back post and nod it in and he fell in. Yeah. He just fell in at back yeah. post. He's like so, slow motion. I'm thinking, crazy, but on. I mean, for a <laughs> down far, cause he sent, he's obviously sent Pines on at that point because Pines is so dangerous. So... <clears throat> <clears throat> with his head, you know what I mean? But is it a master stroke from Daryl Clark because he knows that they're going to take him with him? And he mm. did. He, did. The, 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 he, did. he had three, he had three, at least three players on him. Yeah. And holding back. And then yeah. Matt, and Matt Roberts is left alone to do what he needs to do at back post. Yeah. Um, beat a shoulder, a head, whatever it was, it looked and it went in. So I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'll take, I'll take any goal at this point um, to get the three points. And I think, like you said, on, on reflection, on balance, I think Barnes were probably the better team. You know, Blackpool certainly played better in second half once they got there, up, up, mm. up until the goal and, and about 15 minutes after. Um, and I thought at that point, it was so, it was starting to feel a bit like, oh, no, here we go again. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, let's, but let's have it right. Blackpool are a good side. You know what I mean? They're a good side. They've got a great manager in Steve Bruce. He's, you know, he's a, obviously this recent tragedy, this poor lad. But, I mean, as a, as a football manager... He's he's really experienced, especially in EFL. He's he's you mm. know he's brilliant, mm. he's Steve Bruce. I'd mm. have him at bad. I'd, I'd have had him at bad. I'd had no complaints having Steve Bruce at Barnsley. Mm. But they're, they're a good side and they've been on a good run. They've been putting some really good results together. Yeah, and, um, yeah. You know they pressed us for a good fifteen minutes, and what we're pleasing to see that although at times we looked a little bit flappy in defence, 
we weathered the storm. You know, Slonina made a couple Stay of good solid. saves. Yeah. Saves that you'd expect him to save, but they were good saves nonetheless. He had saves he had to make. Um, and it looked like they were going to press us and come and, and they were going to get the winner. But we, we weathered the storm and then we went on the attack, which was yeah. really pleasing to see. We didn't we didn't let it. We didn't get you know pegged into his area and and pinned in and couldn't get out. We they, they, they pushed for a for, for a good 15, 20 minutes. We we weathered the storm and then we pushed on and we went and got the winner. So it were, like I said, overall, mate, it were a really really pleasing performance. Yeah, uh, a massive step in the right direction. Hundred percent, mate. Yeah, I, everything what you've just said, there, I totally agree with you, mate. You know, got the you know the performance which were a bonus, but having a win. Obviously, we all won't win, but for seeing performance as well, that were a bonus, and it was great to see that things that well, had been said in press and media, we as fans could see it as well. So, you yeah. know, end of full time, great to, well, eventually get back to South Yorkshire with three points. Um, and looking at the Charlton game, like we were on about it off air, you know, Nathan Jones is no mug, he knows what it's all about with Charlton. I'm looking at light side now, ban any injuries. <sighs> Phillips will he pick up that knock with his toe? I don't know. But looking at that, I'd would you be going in? Because I, I think I would be. I'd be going in with the same side against Charlton. I wouldn't want to mix out up. Winning side, get that confidence, get that run, get that belief going on, get that run. I think, I think that's what we're looking at right now. We're looking for that consistency level and moving forward and progressing from it. Uh, for, for me now, it's like, right, now we need to build on this and take it into like at least new year on that consistent drive forward, uh, Ryan. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hoping that this is now the, the the push on like we've had, like we had that slow start on the Duffy, um, and then we had you know we we struggled a bit under Neil Collins until we got going, and then mm. went on that we went you know under Collins and under Duffy we went on a really good run at around this time of year into, yeah. into well into New Year, mm. so yeah, you know fingers crossed that that's what that's what's going to happen now, mate. Uh, and, and like you say, I think I think a consistent eleven or or, or near as damn it. Is gonna is gonna be the key. Cause you remember on Duff when we played really really well when we had that really good run. The vast majority of the time it was the same starting eleven, um, and it's been proven over the years in football that that's just to be the case. You know, the, the more consistent consistent of a starting eleven you can have, that you know, the better you're gonna be yeah. in, in, in overall. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I wouldn't make it unless unless Adam Phillips is still carrying that knot, mate. I wouldn't, mm. I wouldn't I wouldn't make any changes. I personally feel like. Stephen Humphreys and DKD are forming a really nice partnership. Not understanding, yeah. Well, up top, I think them two are starting to form a really good um, working relationship. They, they seem to be, you know, they seem to be really pally with each other. Um, you know, they're buzzing for it, you know, buzzing when they'd scored and stuff like that. And so they seem to be building up a, you know, a good working relationship. Them two. So that's let's let's hope that's that, that's going to push on as well. Yeah, interesting. No Cosgrove and Waters not even on bench as well. So. They must be carrying knocks or something. What well, has he been injured, yeah. apparently, mate. Apparently, yeah. we're, we're already into uh, notes, but the, he didn't get any. Said Doug O'Kane said he's, he were injured, uh, but no further details. So mm -hmm. interesting with that. Um, what I know, what has been out for quite a while now, hasn't he? So yeah, see how long before he's before he's back into yeah. free to get another just, option at least on bench. Just one more, uh, Neil. I just yeah. want. Uh, I, but, um, I bumped into some uh, some fans at Graham coming out, and they were very complimentary about the channel. Said that they watched the channel. All right, yeah. Uh, so he asked me to give him a shout out. So I will do. So the Graham and Mark, they both lived in uh, lived in Blackpool, actually. Got yeah. They're from Bayes. They lived in Blackpool for forty years. But it was very complimentary about the channel. And said he really likes what you know. He watches all the time. He likes what we do. He says we talk a lot of sense. So it really nice to hear. Actually, it was just on. on, on we try to out. talk sense a lot of time, and we don't. Yeah, we? try to talk <laughs> sense. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah. It was nice. It was nice yeah. to catch up with him, and uh, yeah, just give him a quick shout out. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, and like I say, <clears throat> um, thanks for all feedback and comments as well. Uh, it's always great that we try to be, uh, you know, real, call it for what it is, non-scripted, uh, and it's great to have feedback from fans that watch it. Uh, like I say, we just go with the flow, we call it as we do, and we're always respectful. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that. yeah, it's nice. Nice to know that. So, yeah, Charlton game, I'm looking for a win. Of course I am. Um, Absolutely. Be interesting to see figures because we, we know that it's you know two free tickets for a season ticket and they're doing our price food, drink, shock horror. Um, we've got his own thoughts about that, which will kind of <laughs> nicely lead into the, the day after the, the fans forum. Um, but we, we'll get on to that in a minute. But yeah, go ahead, getting back to the game at Charlton, all being well, it should be a decent crowd there, Ryan. 
I'm hoping yeah. so after that result and that performance, mate. Yeah, I mean, if I think if we'd have been, if we'd have, if we'd, if we'd have lost and it'd have been a stinker, I think you might have had five thousand in, mate. But mm. Um, mm. I think the fact that we've we've performed well, um, we've had a really good win against a difficult team that we've lost the last five against. By the way, I didn't see that stat, but the bit last five times we've played, right. they've right. beat, they've beaten us, so they've been a bit of a bogey team for us. So we, we've overturned that as well. So it's re it's really. Um, I'm hoping so, mate. I'm hoping that the free tickets thing and things like that will get people coming, coming down to the ground than than you know sitting at home and watching it on Sky. Yeah. Score prediction. I'm going to say a tight two-one for Barnsley. I'm going to say same, mate. I think it'll be tight. You know, mm. Charlton are a they're a funny side, Charlton, because on paper they've got a great squad. <laughs> You know, yeah, they're, they're yeah. a big ground. Yeah, they're a team based in London. They should be doing better than they are, Charlton. Mm. Um, and and they can on the day. Be got. I mean, they're the only ones to beat Birmingham this season. So they can. And they've got a good manager in Nathan Jones. As much as a pain in ass he is, he's he's a good manager and he's got a, re a really good record in EFL. Mm. So you know, they they can be they can be a difficult team. I think over the years we've and I think we've beaten them at home, but always away. We always seem to lose them when we play away. Yeah. yeah. So. It's not going to be an easy game. Like I said, they're only a point behind us in the league, so it's something to note. So another big game, really, you know, try and distance yourself from the, from that, from those that are sort of placed middle at the table, but similar sort of points to us, try and distance ourselves away from those. Mm. But I think it'll be tight, mate. I think it'll be tight. Yeah, I mean, definitely something we need to build on. And <clears throat> like I said, try and break away from uh, mid-table pack and try to be into pack up. Uh, pushing up for promotion, mate. So, yeah, I fully agree with that. So, we're going to get a bat fans for him, but while we're on about the ground uh, and fans that have been going to work well, you'll notice that in West Ham there used to be a, a big flag there saying one made us, one saved us. And apparently it's been damaged in storms and weathered and everything like that. But I've been told that the club are getting it repaired. Um, all being well, it's going to get sorted out pretty quick when I ask question would it be better just making a brand new one or if it does get repaired rather than leave it out in elements I know it gets covered over but wind still can get over under it and it's like through icy cold and warming up it's yeah. like what me and Ryan have been saying over years it's going to get frail and brittle um, why don't it get ravel, uh, you know unraveled and folded back up by ball boys after a game and just put away in storage I think that would be a lot better preserving some of what you know, we don't want to all battered and tatty. We had all this a couple of seasons ago when flag were up on top at West End and it were flapping about it wind. It looked like it been through a shredder. So again, yeah. things like that, it's like preserve it. Um, a great iconic uh, flag, you know, yeah. uh, sprawled across the field. Let's preserve it. Let's let's keep it presentable. Let's not make it look yeah, a bit shabby and that. You yeah, know. I mean, I, I mean, in a way, I'm glad they're repairing it. I know mm. that I think they could just go and repair it, but I think it has a lot of sentimental value to it. Yeah, uh, considering what it means about you know, obviously, um, Reverend Timothy uh, Preedy that, that 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 made the club, and then obviously uh, Patrick who, who saved us from from going out of business, and mm. you know, a, a local businessman coming and say, you know, so it's got a lot of sentimental meaning. So I think repairing it's probably the right thing, but also because it's got a lot of sentimental meaning. Why don't we just take a bit more care of it? Yeah. I know they put, like the saying, they're putting a tarpaulin over it, but in winter, there's constant temperature changes, you know, and it's it's freezing cold at night, and it warms a bit, a bit during the day, and like you said, the wind blowing through, and eventually, if you just leave it out over years, it'll just become weathered and, and brittle mm. and, 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 and damaged. I think, like you said, it just needs to be, because it holds up so much sentimental value, I think it needs to be just, just put away, just fold it up and put away. It's, it's a two-minute job to take it out, put the bungee yeah. on and, and put it out on seats. Yeah. In the same two-minute job to fold it and put it away in the cupboard. <laughs> yeah, just, same as you mentioned about the flag above ground. You know, just just go yeah, up there and pull it, it out. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, so again, uh, after the game, I've just been on about that. I'm hoping some questions might get asked about it because it's going to be a fan forum coming up, Ryan. Yeah. Um, and again, is it going to be? And I don't mean dis disrespectful. Is there going to be some questions that's going to get asked that are ir irrelevant? Something like. Why aren't Daryl Clark starting a player X, Y, Z? Why yeah. Daryl Clark this? Because Daryl Clark's not at Via at, for fan forum for some unknown reason. Yeah. But he's not going to be there to defend it. For me, questions should be put towards the board. 
you know, Mladan, yeah. you've got John Flatman via, you're going to have Nirav via. I think these kind of questions should be being put regarding what's happening at our club, i.e. Yes. A, question that I, a question that I'd like to get answered. <clears throat> Sorry, there's two. There's two of well, us four to now. It's roughly about a year ago since the FA Cup fiasco last season. What's happened to all them fans via regarding the ocean travel? Now it's come of that. Yeah. And the second one would be since the Callum Simpson fight and, the, you know, it proved a great success and, you know, when are them monies from the council, when are we going to start to see any kind of improvement and development at West Stand? Because I, I understand it is that the more events and the better it is at Oakwell, the more money's coming into Oakwell because yeah. the council on the ground and everything, then we will start to see some kind of improvement. When will that happen? What time well, scale are we looking I, at? I think that needs to be a priority, me, Neil. Yeah. Personally, because when we, you know, when they first did it, they said it was going to be that like, could be up to ten years before they do it. Yeah. That West Stand's not. It's not. It's listen. It's an iconic stand. It is an iconic stand. It's part of the. First, it was there when the ground was built. Mm. Not fit for purpose now, mate. Mm. Not fit for purpose. Not with the other t- three sides of the ground being. Yeah. Thirty years old, Max. Yeah. Rest of the rest of the ground. Mm. You know. Um, with with modern facilities that you know um, all the other three sides and there's people in the way and it's and it's a, it's not just about it looking a bit of an eyesore. It's more to do with the fans that are paying the service. You know they're paying the season yeah. tickets or, yeah. or, or their entrance fees when they're not season tickets. <clears throat> they're paying same rest at ground. In fact, they probably pay more than I pay in Ponte. Mm. So you know it's they're getting it, but they're getting a substandard service. I mean, it's you know the the toilets are. Disgusting, should yeah. we say? Yeah. The toilets are disgusting. Um, you know, and then there's that little shop there, the little thing outside, you know, the little um food serving area that's just not fit for people. I always feel them me were sat outside, you know, elements in and Yeah, there's that right and right. elements, you know. So it, it needs to be a priority because it'll finish ground off. It'll mm. finish the stadium off and it'll look, you know, it'll look dead smart. But we are a bit of a three sided ground at the minute. Mm. We're outside, you know, we're outside in without trying to be rude at all, you know, I think it needs to be a priority. And I think this this idea that it's gonna it might be ten years before we do it, I think is borderline ridiculous. It'll be fall it'll be falling to it'll be, it'll be, it'll be falling to bits by that time. Mm. You know, so I think they've got to not just appreciate that 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 I understand that there's not that many people sitting in that stand, but like it like Matt says from A up and down, you know, what, what Matt says is the reason people don't sit in that stand because of the state of it. Yeah. If it were a nice new stand you probably find a lot more people would sit in it. Mm. Mm. So, and do you I, think? Do you think? I'll I'll give this an all because it's been put to me, and I'm going to ask it. I know other people won't say it, but I'm going to call it out. Like I say, it's not being disrespectful, but I'm going to call it out. Is it a coincidence? Because I, you know, you know, people will be out there. Is it a coincidence that the day before the fans forum that food and drink are our price, and you can get two? Two freebie uh, tickets to people. Is it a coincidence that it's a bit of a, a, a bit of a crowd pleaser before the, you know, the the, the big engagement with the fans? I, I personally, I think it's a bit. Mm, it's it, a I, bit. I think so, mate. Yeah, um, obviously, I think it is. Um, you know, from 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 a business standpoint, from there, so it's going to be fresh in everyone's mind when they go they go in there, and they've got a, 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 an immediate retort if people ask, start asking them about price of tickets and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to say it's, it's personally. I think it's a good move from the club. I think it's a yeah, of course it's, it's yeah. a step in the right direction. Is what I'll say. Mm. Um, you know, it it proves that they're listening and they're not just being blindly going along with just you know that's it. This is price of tickets. That's the price of drink. That's price of food. Blah blah blah. You know what I mean? So the, the realised, especially I think I think the the Wickham at home on a Tuesday night, the the attendance there was a was a massive eye opener. Yeah. And hopefully a massive eye opener for the club. So it certainly was me as a fan because it, it, it just it just felt empty, mate. Yeah. So you know, but why would somebody pay? You know, the cheapest adult ticket is twenty seven quid in Ponte, and up to thirty two quid in East End. Mm. If somebody's not got a season ticket, when we're not playing well, it's a Tuesday night. Weather's lousy. Are they really going to come and pay thirty pounds to come and watch it when they can sit home and watch it on Sky? And especially if it's not just you. What about if you've got your son with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you and your wife want to go, and then you you bought it, you're getting up to what you're pushing up towards hundred quid, aren't you? And it's it's too much, mate. And it's good to see that they've they've made the step in the right direction. I think the disappointing thing is is that they started they put themselves in this position in first place by 
what looks like greed, really. Mm. Um, and it's backfired massively because the fans have voted with the feet, and right and rightly so. So I understand that there's a difficult balancing act um, for the club that they can't just start saying, well, we'll do tickets for a tenner or do tickets for 15 quick. Then you yeah, have all the season ticket holders that are upset yeah. that are saying, hang on a minute. Yeah, we that. bought our tickets up front. Why is it? So, so I get it's it's not just it's not just cut and pay. You know, it's not just mm. black and white for the for the club just to deal with. Um, but I think the twenty is plenty is 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 a great um, you know a great message to put out there. I think it's a great scheme to put into place um, for all grounds really for away tickets and things like that. And the, the, the twenty is plenty because you're going to get more people in. You're going to get more people spending brass in ground. Obviously, if the food prices are good. Um, but I think it's a good, it's a step in the right direction, Neil. Mm. I think what the club really need to address, instead of what we might might be foreseen as like a gimmicky offer, like with two free tickets and a and free our price food, maybe just make things more affordable in in long run. Just make, make the food and the tickets more affordable, and you ain't you you ain't need to do stuff like this. I was just I was just about to say that, mate. I was just about to say it's great that they are doing what they're doing, but I think lesson to be learned is that if the tickets. And, and you know, and, and this is for scene ticket holders and match day tickets were reasonable, and the food and drink was reasonable. You get a lot more people coming, a lot more people spending the money, which yeah. for me, surely, is only going to be better for Barnsley and the economy. You know, it's like I get where they're coming from. I mean, me and scene ticket holder, I get two or three to get out. What do I get really as a, a scene ticket holder? Yeah, I'm looking at that. Yeah, you're going to get a fuller Oakwell, which is fine. I'm all for that. You want the atmosphere buzzing and that. But what am I getting out of it? Am I getting an exclusive out of it? Am I getting, you know, because all uh, food and drink are going to be our price. You get a freebie when you go in, everybody. So it's like, that's for everybody. So someone's going with a free ticket. They're going to get treated to our price food and snap. They're going to get a freebie when they get in. And all those what's been going from day one are going to have the same privilege as our price is like someone who's probably coming yeah. for this time. Yeah. So I'm thinking, well done a minute. I've been through a foot call winter once, like you have, when it's piss been pissing it down. We we haven't really had out before, yet we we get I'm getting two free tickets, I can get to my friends, which I have done. They're gonna come, they're gonna have a good experience. But are they then going to come the next midweek game? Are they going to pay that? Probably not. I seem to get out, they'll still be going to the ground, even if it's like rain, wind or snow. And I'm going to be paying back to normal full prices. So as a seem to get older for me, what do I get out of it? Mm, nothing, apart from a fuller atmosphere. Apart from a fuller atmosphere, but I mean, hopefully, I mean, I don't know, mate. I don't know. I don't know what what. what but I mean. the, I, I'm open. I, I, sorry, I didn't mean to put it on but these kind of questions. That I'm hoping it get asked to uh, yeah. the board. These yeah, I think it's it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a valid it's a valid question. I mean, it is a valid question because it's almost like you know, as a season ticket holder, we're the ones that are, you know putting the money in at the beginning. And this is not the derogatory on anybody that don't go because I understand there's a lot of reasons why people don't buy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But obviously, a lot of the finance, uh, the financing made for it, uh, are planned on the amount of season tickets that are, that are bought. So you, you're doing that part, and 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 I like the incentive. But it's like you say, what, <laughs> what are you getting? Other than other than a fuller Oakwell, which I'm I'm happy with. To be fair, yeah. mm. you know, I want I, I want a fuller Oakwell, and I oh, want yeah. consistently more. I, I want to consistently see Oakwell, more, um, you know, fuller because it it makes a massive difference. It makes a massive it's difference to. The players, it makes a massive difference to the match day experience. So I suppose it's that, isn't it, really? Mm. But maybe I don't know. Maybe next season give give discounts to to on season on long term season ticket holders or season ticket holders. I don't know. Discounts? Don't swear on this channel. Discounts? <laughs> discounts? Yeah, I, I get what you're coming from. I don't from, know. But, I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, what yeah. it is. You know, maybe. Yeah. Well, we'll say as maybe it's someone. Well, yeah, maybe I mean, it's... Let's see how successful it is Tuesday night. To be fair, true. But all being well, or someone at the club is listening to that, and, and they're having in the old grey matter of a think tank, thinking, yeah, what can we do now for senior ticket holders to reward them for getting it? What maybe someone's in background working? I'm hoping so, but I'm hoping the, you know good questions. What what questions? I mean, I've had my say about questions and that. What kind of questions do you want to be asked? Kind of thing. Um, 
I mean, I'm going, so I will. All right, I, mean, got anything, you. I'm, I think there's me and two downs from chat group. I think from WhatsApp group. I think they're yeah. going on there. So, um, for me, it's more about. I, I, I want to know why Dal Clark's not there. Mm. For one, I'd like to know why he's not there. I'll probably get a probably get a bit of a. <laughs> A standard answer is only we've, we've been busy with club and all this sort of stuff. But I think the manager sh- should be there to answer questions about about, about the football. Um, um, I want to ask about the chance. Uh, for me, I'd like to hear questions about the transfer window because although it appeared to be good on paper when it when it finished, in reality we're starting to see now that there's you know we're massively lacking. We we, we should have got more strikers in. Mm. Um, you know. I, it needs to get if in January if we are thinking about bringing strikers in, I'd like to see that business get done early. Don't leave everything right last minute because again we left it well last minute. I mean I'm glad we got DKD in, but we got him at last last game. We were three yeah, four games into the season already. Yeah. You know, um, so and also ask about the Connor one. Why is Connor not playing? Mm. Because you know, within I think it's really common a common theme across the fan base is that that looks like a season ticket seller. I'm seeing that as well, mate. Yeah, because that. it, it because that's how it looks, Neil. Because yeah. they were struggling; the season ticket sales were poor. Then we bring Connor in, and everyone starts renewing, and he's hardly kicks a ball. Listen, if the lad wants to be a coach, I've got no, I've got no real problem with that. You but, know? but make it come across as. But yeah. it, it certainly looked because he, he's got a two-year player contract. He, he got a two-year contract as a player coach, and then mm. another contract that he's going to sign after that to be a full-time coach. Mm. But it, it appears that that sort of contract, or certainly that been element done, of this contract, has been has been rapidly pushed <laughs> yeah. I just think, listen, Connor wants to do what he wants to do. He's got no, he's got nothing left to prove in his playing career. He's had a wonderful no, playing no. career. Um, it just feels disappointing that he, he were brought on as the return of King Connor to come back, and we we barely seen him kick a ball in a competitive that. game for us. And I think there's been games winning this season where someone like Connor having that experience said on it midfield, just coming on, you know, it, it would, would have been ideal. Um, I'm not saying he's going to start every game, but he, he's not even, he's not even on subs bench, mate. So that's disappointing to see. Mm. Um, because at minute, it looks like a season ticket seller. Yeah. If, if it had come back and just, if it had been announced he's coming back as a coach, I was still being happy, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'd still be happy. I'd still yeah, be happy. Been happy. Cool he's back well. at the club, and he's wanted to come back to the club. It had meant it still had meant a lot to everybody. Uh, it was just sold to us as being a player, a player coach, and he's not done much playing, has he? Let's just say that. Yeah, must have said that, and uh, I think a, a decent note to end on. Um, so we've covered Blackpool game, we've covered the Charlton game. We've had thoughts about. You know the the flags and the stadiums, and obviously the fans form coming up on the day after the Charlton game. If you're going and you bump into Ryan, be it a and a couple of Dan's as well from Channel, um, you know, put your questions across. Make them meaningful. Make them not yeah. personal, but also you want to you want you want answers from him. You don't want to just be fobbed yeah, off. Just, for me, just the questions, Neil. It's just yeah. Let's ask questions that we need to ask to the board while we've got them in front of us. Yeah. While they're there and we're in a room and they're under pressure to answer and they don't go away and give you some, you know, some politician answer that they can get because they, they, they've, got, they've got that time to think about it. Let's put them on spot yeah. and let's get the difficult questions answered. What I will say is if your question, I saw some online, it's brilliant. If your question can be answered by our email, don't ask it at the fans forum. Yeah. You know, yeah. let's, let's, I'm not saying that anybody's questions are not important. That's not what I'm saying. What mm. I'm saying is we've got an opportunity to speak to Nareev. John Flatman and and uh, and Maladin and, we're, and and let's put those questions to them guys that they're going to be able to answer on the spot. Mm. Yeah, we need we need some answers. You know, it might be truth. We might not like it, but I'd rather be told the truth at Earths and some and just be fobbed off with false yeah. hope and false promises. Um, rather be the type as always, mate. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Leave your comments uh, below. We'll answer them all. Be interested to see what happens. Hate the game and be at the fans forum, and probably we we'll, might do a Friday night live um, and discuss about all matters what's been answered. Because I'll be, I'll be taking notes and seeing did this get answered? What do you think about this? So that'd be an interesting one. So Absolutely. we'll probably do a, a video, a show about that, and see what the outcome is and what the general consensus of the Barnsley fans uh, seen. If they're happy, displeased, or no further forward, be interesting, wouldn't it? 
Uh, yeah, one thing left to say, and you only find it on this channel, you Reds. <laughs>